Question seven looks like a moments question. Um, we've got a uniform rod um, resting on the ground and a uh, rough peg. So uh, it's going to be there. Okay, it says the um, uniform, uh, it's a uniform rod, goes from A to B. Point C is where the peg is. Uh, it's got a mass of six kilograms and uh, it's uniform. So we can assume that the mass is acting in the center of the rod. Um, now, uh, the first question is asking us to draw the forces that are acting on the rod. Well, let's just put those on. We've got a force here from the ground, which is a reaction force. Um, there is going to be force acting in the center of the rod due to the weight of the rod. So that's going to be mg. And there is uh, also going to be um, a reaction force at C, or a force acting upwards from C, but it's going to have a component which is going to be a reaction uh, perpendicular to the to the rod, and there's because it's a rough peg. There's going to be some friction to stop it falling, which is going to act that way. So I'm going to put F um, frictional force. And we'll call this R, and we'll make this one R1, and this one can be R2. Okay, and that's all the forces that are acting on it. So we've we've just done question A. So let's now have a look at question B. But we can do this by taking moments. So we can, uh, uh, we're going to take moments around the pivot point, and the best place to take moments around it looks like C. OK. So um, that gets rid of uh, the forces acting at C here. So we've got um, the, um, let's first have a look at the anti-clockwise uh, moments. Uh, we've got uh, anticlockwise moment is going to be uh, well this distance here we're told uh, sorry this distance A to C is uh, 3 meters and so this distance here is just going to be 1 meter. So um, moments force times uh, um, distance. So um, the anticlockwise moment is going to be 1, because it's a distance of 1 away from C, uh, multiplied by mg, and it's going to be um, mg cos 20, because it's the uh, perpendicular distance there. So that's the anti-clockwise component, and that's going to be equal because the thing's in equilibrium. So the clockwise component, uh, the clockwise component is uh, three um, times r one, um, and that's going to be cos twenty as well. Okay, and that's the clockwise component. So those things are going to be equal for it to be in equilibrium. And now I just have to rearrange for um, R1, which is what I'm trying to find. So I can divide both sides by cos 20. And what I get is that 3R1 is equal to mg. So R1 is equal to mg over 3. And I will remind myself the mass of the rod is 6 kilograms, so this is um, going to be, um, or R is going to be 2G, which is 19.6 uh, newtons. Now for part um, C, We're asked to find uh, the normal reaction acting at C. Well, on our diagram, that's R2. Find the value for R2. So to do this one, uh, I'm going to use the same method. 
I'm going to take moments, but this time I'm going to take moments about A, this point here, and that eliminates the R1 component, so it makes the problem easier to solve. So again, I'm going to take moments, but this time I'm going to take them about point um, A. Uh, and again, it's in equilibrium, so let's first of all do the um, anti-clockwise component. Well, the anti-clockwise component is uh, a distance two away, it's the weight, uh, so it's going to be two times mg, and um, it's uh, the perpendicular distance, uh, so again it's cos 20, and that's the um, anti-clockwise component, and this has got to be equal to the clockwise components, um, which is going to be... Um, at the R2 acting at C, if you have a look, this component here is the clockwise component, and that's the distance 3 away, and it's got a magnitude of R, is it R2, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Uh, and this is already perpendicular, so don't, there's no uh, trig function to go in there, that is already acting perpendicular to the, um, to the uh, rod. So I'm trying to find out the value of R2. So R2 is just equal to 2 thirds mg cos 20. Remember that m is 6. So this is going to be, um, I think, 4g um, cos 20. And um, that comes out at uh, thirty six point eight. Now, for part um, C I I. I'm going to um, just draw this picture out again. We've got point C here, and this is uh, 20 degrees. And I'm going to put the forces on that we've worked out already. We know it's got some weight acting at the center. We know uh, R1 acting there, the reaction force, and we've, we've already worked that out. It was 19.6. Uh, we've also got a reaction force here. And we've already worked that out, just above, it's 36.8. And we're trying to find out the value of this force here, the frictional force, right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to resolve um, the forces this time, not use moments, but resolve the forces uh, parallel to the, um, to the rod. So I'm going to take this um, uh, component of the um, weight here, and I'm going to try and get its uh, component here, and I'm going to take this um, component here, the R1, and I want uh, the component of this acting in this direction here. Okay, so just doing a little uh, picture here. What do we get? We get that this force is. Um, the uh, um, some of this is going to be um, mg um, sine twenty and. This component here is going to be uh, R1 uh, sine 20 as well. Okay, so we've got all the um, components acting uh, up and down the parallel to the slope. 
and the frictional force uh, plus um, is that because uh, it's acting up the slope. So the frictional force plus R1 sine 20, because that's acting up the slope, has got to be equal to mg sine 20, because that's acting down the slope and it's not moving up or down the slope. Um, so F is equal to mg sine 20 minus R1 was 19.6, so this is 19.6 sine 20. Um, so F equals um, mg minus 19.6 all multiplied by sine 20. Um, and so the frictional force is, um, let's have a look. Looks like thirteen point four newtons when I plug the uh, six kilograms in for the mass and the uh, and nine point eight for the uh, acceleration. Now for the final part of the question, it's asking us to find the, um, the coefficient of friction. Um, the rod is on the point of slipping, so we're, because it's on the point of slipping, we can say that uh, F, the frictional force equals mu R, um, and this is going to be R2 um, at that point there. So let's just go back up and see what I mean. We're talking about here, um, this one here. So the frictional force is equal to mu. Uh, R2, 36.8. Okay, so um, because it's on the point of slipping, it's an inequality. So we've got that F equals mu, um, R2 was 36.8, I think. Um, yeah, so that's times 36.8. We've worked out what the frictional force is. So mu, um, is equal to 13.4, the force, divided by 36.8, the um, um, reaction force, and um, comes out 0.364.